Good morning. Oh, we gotta try that again. You got I, I know it's raining outside, but you know, I have to preach up here and I have to look at you, alright? So we got we gotta change the mood here, alright? Good morning. A lot better. Thank you so much. And I've had four cups of coffee anymore, and you'll be in trouble. All right. So today we're gonna to talk about giving thanks. And listen. Being thankful is not just about when things are going well. Truthfully, one of the best times that you can be thankful is when things are not going well. Because by being thankful, you can change your attitude even in the middle of horrible difficulties. I was was reading several books from people who survived atrocities. And one of the ways they made it through was by being grateful people, being thankful. So are you going through a hard time this year? Be thankful. Thankful. When we look back at the pilgrims and what they went through that first year, um, losing almost half, uh, over a third, um, uh, you know, they went through a lot of adversity, and yet that first Thanksgiving that we celebrate, um, they were grateful. They had lost family members, most of them because of starvation, it caused other diseases, and yet they celebrated and they were grateful. That's really the foundation of our country. Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a Thanksgiving Day in the middle of the Civil War in the worst unrest. So are you frustrated? Are you irritated? Are you going through a tough time? Be thankful. Are things great and your life is awesome? Well, you should have already started, right? If you want to have more joy, truthfully, if you want to have better health, and they've even discovered if you just want to be happy, Being grateful is a huge, huge thing. Now, have you ever been around? I want you to think of somebody. I just want to bring you down here for a second. I want you to think of somebody that you know that is ungrateful. Okay? Think of that person. Has everybody got somebody in mind? Anybody? If you can't think of anybody, it could be you. So, all right? So think of an ungrateful. Do you like hanging around that person? An ungrateful. Nobody wants to be around an ungrateful person. Now. I wanted to teach my kids years ago about gratefulness, and this is how I taught them. We pulled into the cheapest, fastest, laziest restaurant in America, McDonald's. And um, so we pulled into McDonald's one night, and um, I told my kids, hey, and I don't think it was the dollar menu then. This has been a while ago, but they had things for a dollar. So I said, kids, you know, you're getting, I think it was a hamburger each, and... um, uh, I don't even think we got fries. I think I was just getting them a hamburger, and then we were going to, you know, do something else, macaroni when we got home, you know, something really healthy. And um, yogurt and tofu, isn't that what that girl said? Anyway, so, um, so I said, you know, this is what we're doing. And all of a sudden, in the back seat, I could hear the kids begin to argue. Now, I had not gotten to that point where they trap you. Do you know what I'm talking about? They, they now have figured out, hey, if we trap them, they can't leave no matter how long we take. So you pull into McDonald's, once you get past the thing, there's a point of no return. They don't let you out. And so we hadn't gotten there yet. The kids started arguing, and you know what I did? I pulled away. said, well, you've got to figure out what you're going to eat at home. Cereal, sandwiches, you know, you're on your own. What? <gasps> now let me tell you how it works now. Even as old as my kids are now, when we pull into McDonald's, Silence happens. Because my kids know if they make noise, I'm not only going to mess up an order, they know it's their order. If they're the one that says that, it's just and not on purpose, it's just, you know, oh, I thought you wanted, you know, tofu. I didn't know that wasn't what you want. You mean you wanted to make chicken with no lettuce and make whatever, make something? Everything's make what? They get silent as we pull in, and, I, I, and, and anymore I say, hey, you know, they're like, Dad, you know, can we get, grab something? I'm like, sure, sure, what do you want off the dollar menu? And they, bubble, bubble, bubble. not an argument. Why? Because one day I said, if you're not going to be grateful, nada, no soup for you, right? So what happened? My kids kind of learned, hey, if I'm not going to be grateful, I'm not going to, listen, parents, if you can teach your kids anything, grandparents, if you can teach your kids anything, if you notice that they're ungrateful, you don't have to give them things. If you notice that they're ungrateful, you can say, oh, well, you're making the choice not to do this. Teachers, same thing for you. When you get, let's say you're getting ready to do something special for you, don't yell at them. Don't scream, no playground for you, you know, or whatever. Just look at them and go, oh, well, if you guys are going to complain, we don't have to do the playground today. (gasps) 
If you guys are going to complain, we don't have to have coloring time today. If you guys are going to complain, we don't have to go out to eat. You ever have trouble getting your kids ready? Now, don't try this on spouses. This is not. But you just say, hey, guys, if you don't want to get ready, it's okay. We don't have to go out to eat. We've got plenty of bologna here. And all of a sudden, right? They find themselves, they find their shoes, and they, there's no screaming. Why? Because you're teaching them, hey, it's gratitude. You're getting something special. Listen, every day we have a lot to be grateful for. You're breathing today. If you're not, please raise your hand. Okay? You're, you're, let us know real quick. You're breathing today. You have a lot to be thankful for. We're meeting in the community center today. It's beautiful. We're going to have a cold front coming through. Yeah, it's rainy. You could complain about the rain, or you can be happy that your grass will be green. It, it, all of our choices in life are that way. And that's what Thanksgiving is about. But here's the deal. It shouldn't be one time a year for Christians. It, we need to develop an attitude of gratitude. As Christians, you should be the most grateful people on earth. But can I be honest with you? I worked at a restaurant. And does anybody in here work at a restaurant? Okay. I worked at a restaurant. Can I tell you the worst people to wait on? Christians, especially right after church. It's like somebody slapped them with a mean stick at church. And they, they come out of church and they're meaner than they were. I don't know if it's the legalism that people get or what happens to them. They're the most demanding. We should be the most gracious people to wait on. When somebody makes a mistake, we should be the most forgiving. Now, I'm not saying you don't expect your waitress to do anything. I'm not saying that you, know, you don't go to work if you're a boss and go, yeah, whatever you do. It's all good. You know. But we should be grateful. We should be thankful. We should be the people that say, you know what, God, thanks for what you've given me. When we wake up in the morning, we should, oh, I slept in a bed and not on the floor. Thank God I'm not camping. That's what I said this morning. One of my friends is at Boy Scout camp. And they woke up. And every time I go Boy Scout camp, every time I go camping, if we need rain, if there's ever a drought, I'll, I'll take one for the team. I'll go camping. And immediately there will be a deluge, right? And, and so, I, you know, I looked at my friend's set and I said, thank God I'm not camping this weekend. So what are you thankful for? Don't be ungrateful. So here's what we're going to do. Two things today. First, we're going to talk about why give thanks. If the colonists, if the pilgrims when they came could be thankful after losing over a third of their people, if they could be thankful, we have much to be thankful for today. Life's not perfect. It's never perfect. You can focus on the speed bump or you can focus on the road ahead. Number one. First of all, we need to be thankful because God commands it. Now, God doesn't command it because he doesn't like you. You get to be thankful. That's like, you know, hopefully you make your kids brush their teeth, okay? Hopefully... You brush your teeth. And hopefully you don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I've got to brush my teeth. Right? If you're, if you're over 12, you shouldn't do that. Right? Why not? Because you know that it's good for you. Thanksgiving is good for you. Listen to what it says in Colossians 3. Let the peace of Christ that gives control, excuse me, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. Because you were all called together into one body to have peace. Always be thankful. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Use all wisdom to teach and instruct each other. How do we instruct each other? By singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. By the way, did you know when you sing songs, especially songs like we sing that are based on scripture, you find yourself singing those songs later and without even knowing it, you learned something. You may not even like the song. And you, you ever had a song you sang in church and you thought, ah, it's okay. That song's a little too. And then halfway through the week you find yourself going. You ever go to the store and they're playing a song and you don't like the song. And you walk out of the store and the next thing you know, you know, you hear John Lennon singing. So this is Christmas. You're like, I hate that song. <laughs> Songs teach us. They show us. They demonstrate to us. Hello, Yoko. I love you. All right. Anyway, let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Used all wisdom. I already said all that. In your hearts to God, everything you do or say should be done to obey Jesus your Lord. And in all you do, give 
thanks to God the Father through Jesus. Gosh, we should write a song like, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give, right? We just sang that, right? So that's rolling around in your head. God wrote the owner's manual. I had a friend, I'll never forget, I worked at this big church and they had just bought a brand new minibus. And he pulled that baby in. He had to fill it up before he left on a trip. And he filled that baby up. And as he left, started running really rough. He had filled the regular gas vehicle with diesel. Thinking that it was a good thing. They had to pull out the engine and rebuild the whole thing. They developed a new policy, by the way. We'll fill up the vehicle if you're going around town. I mean, this, they literally had just bought it. It was the first time anyone had taken it out, and he didn't read the little instruction on the thing that said, gasoline. I don't know how he even got the, but anyway, that's another story. He had to try. He had to try. He had to be in the pump and try. Well, God wrote the owner's manual on you. He wants you to be thankful and grateful. But we live in a world that pulls us towards negativity. And we wonder why things go rough and why things don't go well and why people don't want to be around us. Listen, if you want people to want to be around you, be a grateful person. Nobody wants to be around somebody who goes, that's just not enough. That's, you know, if it was just a little more. By the way, you're getting ready to meet with your family. Everybody has a family member who nothing is good enough for. All right? <laughs> that was a little too loud. But uh, everybody has a family member. Can I tell you what to do? Just give thanks while they're complaining. When they complain about something, just think, well, God, thank you for some stuffing. This stuffing's dry. God, thanks for stuffing. I mean, you don't have to say it to them to their face. I mean, don't be a jerk, you know. <laughs> this stuffing's good. You know, don't. We don't need any wrestling over stuffing or turkeys. But we are so blessed. The poorest person in this room is richer than most people in the world. And yet we complain. We find time to complain. Listen, God said, give thanks. Why? To, to do all kinds of things. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Number two, give thanks. Why? Because it changes my focus. They've actually done studies. Psychologists have discovered that it actually makes you happier when you're grateful. When you're grateful for what you have. That's why one kid you can give an Xbox to and they go, eh, it's not exactly what I wanted. And another kid you give a pair of shoes to or something very simple, a coloring book, and they go, oh. What's our attitude? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with, say it. Oh, my gracious. Do you guys want me to keep going? All right. With prayer and petition with. Thank you. Thank you. Present your request. And I love how present and present are the same word. Present your request to God. What will happen? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do you know when you're anxious and when you worry, do you know what you're doing? You're putting yourself in the place of God. You're saying, God, I got this. We're talking about that in a second. They discovered that people who are thankful and grateful, this researcher, uh, Dr. Robert Emmons, did a study, and they found out that when people are thankful, they take better care of themselves. I, I understand that, because the more I thought about that, I thought, yeah, because if you're just kind of, meh, you're not going to want to get up. You're not going to want to take care of yourself. They've discovered that people who are grateful cope with stress better. So when things go rough, you know how to handle it. By the way, you ever met anybody who every time, and maybe you work with somebody like this, anytime anything goes wrong, you're like, oh, gee, don't tell them, right? Because you know if you say to them, you know, hey, the air conditioner only goes to 74 at that place. <gasps> 74! You know, you're just like, oh. So what happens? You cope with stress better when you're grateful. You have a stronger immune system when you're grateful. And you ready for this? Here's a big one. You have a brighter view of the future when you're grateful. Why? Because you're grateful for all that you have. So it makes you not be, like this verse says, you're not anxious about tomorrow because you're already thankful for today. Number three. It reminds me that God is in charge and I'm not. 
So would you tell the person next to that you that they are not in charge, please? Especially if they're your spouse. You know, sometimes as a pastor of a church, I have to think, I have to remember that I'm not in charge of you. Every once in a while, I get a phone call about a church member, or a church member calls me about something, and I think, oh, how do we fix this? And then I realize, it's not my job to fix it. God, you're in charge. Now, that, he, that doesn't mean he doesn't give you a responsibility. You can't just wake up one morning, and your kids aren't behaving, and go, well, God's in charge. See ya. You know, that's not what that means. Although that would be nice, right? Is there something, yep, you're on your own, my kid, you know. You know what the most arrogant thing you can do is? The most arrogant thing. Nobody likes an arrogant person. The most arrogant thing you can do is worry. If you worry, you're saying, God, you're not really in charge. You're not doing a good job. I can take care of this. And if I think about it enough, I'll figure it all out. How's that working for you? All worry does is get your heart rate messed up and give you gray hair. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Even on the bad days. Know that the Lord is, what's the next word? He's God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. By the way, that's not a compliment. Uh, David was a shepherd. David wrote this psalm. He's called a sheep. He worked with sheep. Sheep stank, were dumb. If sheep had a lot of hair and fell over, they couldn't even get themselves upright. I don't know about you, but I feel that way. Do you ever feel like you just can't fix it? you ever feel like I just can't pull it together? I'm talking about Thanksgiving, and you're sitting there going, yeah, but I just can't. It's all right. It's all right. We are the sheep of his pasture. He's the one who guides us, protects us, picks us up when we're down, knows that we stink, and hugs us anyway. Enter his gates with, what's the next word? And his courts with praise. Give praise. to him. I'm going to make you say thanks every time. And praise his name for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. He is going to be faithful to you when you're not. He's going to be faithful to you when you have a bad day. He's going to be faithful to you when you feel depressed and discouraged and you want to give up and you want to quit and you don't feel like you can hear him and you don't feel like you matter and you feel like life is over and you begin to say, I have had enough. The Bible says that he and his love and his faithfulness Endure forever. So even when you give up, he will never give up on you. He will never give up on you. So don't give up. He's going to hang on to you. You have a lot to be thankful for no matter what is happening. Why? Because he loves you. I can remember two years ago on this day, all I could eat for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day fell on this day three years ago. Excuse me. Three years ago on this day, Thanksgiving Day was today. This day. So on my Facebook this morning, I had a picture of a potato. I was really sick. A few months later, I ended up in the hospital for almost 30 days. Reed, you came and visited me there. Almost 30, some of the others did too, but he came when I was really sick. <laughs> All I could eat last year, or that year at Thanksgiving was a potato, and then I went back to bed. I didn't even eat the whole potato. Potato didn't even taste good. I probably wasn't even supposed to eat a potato. I remember being in the hospital and looking out the window and I had all these tubes and at one point I couldn't even walk around the hospital. I had two IVs and I could walk with them. I learned how to walk with them, but there was actually a time where they intubated me and I could not get out of bed. And I remember looking out and all I could see from my bed was the, was the buildings in Orlando. And I remember seeing the sun setting and hitting the buildings and I said, well, God, thank you for the light hitting the buildings. That's really pretty. You can give thanks anywhere, in any circumstance, with anything that's going on in your life. Regardless of what's happening to you, how you're feeling, whether you're worn out, whether you've had enough, whether you're discouraged, no matter what your mood is, you can give thanks. Thanks does not have to do with your mood. And by the way, if you're thankful, your mood will improve. On the way here, I just decided to try it. I started thanking God for everything I saw. I thanked God for the 35 mile speed limit sign that I usually complain about. Like Sisson Road should be 40 at least, right? I'm, you're right? I'm, I'm helping law enforcement somehow in my head, right? 
by complaining about stuff. All right? It's going to help me. God's in charge and I'm not. Aren't you glad? So give thanks. So how do we do that? How can we give thanks? Uh, this video sums up the rest of the message. Mickey found this online. And we're going to watch this video real quick. And it will help us to transition to this part of the message. A great reminder. So how do we do that? How do we carry that out? Number one, abide in Christ each day. Because here's what happens if you're a Christian and you really spend your life and spend your time and focus on what God's done for you. His Holy Spirit begins to overflow. Your heart begins to overflow with gratitude. Now gratitude doesn't mean that every day is yay. Some days are really hard. Sometimes life is just very, very hard. But when we trust God, we can overflow with gratitude even on the hardest days. In Colossians 2, it says this, And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust Him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and draw up nourishment from Him. By the way, you don't have to tell an orange tree that it has to do the oranges. You don't have to tell an apple tree, hey, you've got to make some apples. If they have the right nutrients and the right ingredients, it's natural. For a Christian, if Thanksgiving is not natural for you, it's not God that's broken. Are you getting the right nutrients? Are you abiding in Him? Are you spending time in His Word? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you spending time giving thanks? See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth that you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. So right now I just want you to think of one simple thing that you're thankful for. Something very simple. And I want you to tell the person next to you what that is. Go ahead. Tell them what you're thankful for. Go ahead and take a moment. You can do that.
You can think of more than one, it's okay. Yeah. By the way, I just want to say I'm thankful for you as a church. I'm very grateful for you. I'm very grateful for Surfside. I go places and people talk about how they visited here and how real you are and how normal. I love how they say that. How normal you are. And what they mean by that is that you're not fake and you don't have pretense. People don't come to church and see plastic people. They see regular, ordinary, hurting people who say, I trusted Jesus Christ and I'm thankful for you. So not only do we abide, number two, you ready for this? It rhymes. Not only abide, but go outside. They've actually done studies that viewing nature reduces anger, fear, stress, blood pressure, and tension. They've done studies with children. If you're a teacher, you need to listen carefully. And if you're a parent or a grandparent, listen carefully. Even pictures of nature calm children down. Well, I've got your whole classroom now. So, you know. They did a study in Pennsylvania at a... Uh, a research center, and um, they, they had a wing, and um, I mean a hospital. They had a wing where they did certain surgeries. And in that wing, they found that half the rooms had high complaints of pain and um, uh, longer rates of healing and uh, uh, more dissatisfaction, even in the satisfaction surveys, all that kind of stuff. And there were three rooms or several rooms on the other end of the hall that had just the opposite, quicker healing time, Less pain, less medical medicine needed, and less complaints after release. And so they started doing a study to find out what happened. Here's what happened. In the one section, because of where it was located, there was a view out the window of a wall. And in the other section, there was a view out the window of a small courtyard with just a little bit of nature and a tree. And just that little bit of nature. They weren't even able to go outside, but just getting that little bit of nature changed the healing time of people. In Psalms chapter 8, the psalmist says this, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. The psalmist says, When I go outside and I see how awesome nature is, I say, God, you made all of this and you care about me? That'll make you grateful. Not only abide in Christ, not only go outside, but finally, last but not least, make a list. There's a few ways you can do that. You can use the alphabet, especially if you're having a rough morning. Wake up and just start with A. Lord, thanks for apples. Orangutans, I guess. Or... Lord, thanks for books. If you, unless you're a student, then you might be like, no thanks. If you're done with school, Lord, thanks that I don't have to read a lot of books, right? Lord, thanks for colored televisions. I mean, you know, you thank God for anything. You can use the alphabet. Maybe you don't want to use the alphabet. Use one letter. Think of something you're thankful for. Lord, thanks for tires and trees and Tyrannosaurus rexes. You know, I mean, I don't know. You know, just take some time to just be thankful. In Psalms 105, it says this. Look to the Lord in strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. His miracles and judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham. His chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. Now I want to give you something very specific that you can do at Thanksgiving. A lot of you do this. Before you eat your Thanksgiving meal, and you may or may not have a choice of this, but a lot of you go around the table and say, name one thing you're thankful for this year. That's a good habit. Maybe you eat at a home where that would like make everybody mad, okay? Maybe you really you have like anti-God parents, I don't know. Well, then just think for yourself what's something you're thankful for this year. But here's some other things you can do. You can also, um, and I talked about this several years ago. One of our members told me that they, every year, had uh, put out a tablecloth that they bought special for Thanksgiving. And they gave people Sharpie markers. And they had them write what they were thankful for the year and their name. And they said it was so awesome when you could look back and see what you were thankful for, what they were thankful for. So there's an idea for you, but all I can say is this. Go out of your way to be thankful. But can I give you one other thing? Don't wait for Thanksgiving. Every single day, no matter how bad life is, no matter how troubled it is right now, you and I have much to be thankful for. 
The early pilgrims that came to the United States for freedom from oppression came, and although they went through horrible tragedy and difficulty, they were thankful. So let's follow their example. Let's allow God to fill us with his spirit. Let's go outside and just take time to get together with other people. By the way, the other thing they've discovered, when you go outside, it helps you feel connected to other people. So go outside. Take some time to be grateful. Don't sit in a box and watch a little box. Go outside. Get outside of the box and thank God. And spend time making a list and being thankful. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, the first step to that fulfillment that only God can bring is to give your life to him. I'd love to talk to you about what that means after the service. If you're watching online, you can send me an email or a text or a call or whatever. And I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. Maybe you're here today and the truth is you've just been ungrateful lately. It's okay. Ask forgiveness. And then ask God, God, would you help me to be grateful? Even in the middle of hard things, help me to be grateful. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for Christians that Thanksgiving is not just once a year. It really is a daily, moment-by-moment thing because you've blessed us so much. And we are so, so thankful and grateful. Father, I pray. Lord, I know there's folks going through difficulty and trials. I want to pray that in the midst of all that, that you would renew their joy. That you'd renew their strength. Father, that they would know the presence of your spirit and your power in ways that only you can do. And Father, I pray as a church that you'd continue to strengthen us in you, that we would exalt you, that we'd be a thankful and a grateful church, not a complaining church, not a criticizing church, but a church that is thankful and grateful. When people get around us, they see our love for you and for each other. Lord, thank you for what you're doing here. Continue to work in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the ways we give thanks is by giving, being faithful to doing what God wants us to do. So you give what God's put on your heart today. He'll take care of you, and he takes care of us. Thanks.